Now, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We're staying in Zuccotti Park. Our producers are there on the ground. As of this broadcast, about 7 o'clock this morning, uh, the protesters got word that Brookfield Properties, which uh, is runs the park and has the building at Liberty Plaza across the street would not be sending in cleaners fortified by New York City police uh, to move the protesters uh, at this point. That's what we understand. Michael Ratner um, is president of the Center for Constitutional Rights, uh, co-author of the new book, Hell No, Your Right to Dissent in 21st Century America. Michael, tell us what's happening on the ground. The deputy mayor, Cass Holloway, uh, said um, that they would not be moving in. They had just gotten word from Brookfield Properties. But I wonder if they hadn't simply gotten word overnight as the people, the group swelled in Zuccotti Park, that they would not be moved. And so the city caved, at least for now. Now, Amy, I was here last night at the General Assembly, and it was one of the most moving experiences, as you know, that you can have being here. Incredible experiment in democracy. And I woke up this morning to get down here with the other National Lawyers Guild and Center people to be here for what we considered might be a bloodbath. I've been in these before. I was in Columbia in 68, and I was totally fearful of coming here. And all of a sudden, when we're down here at 7 o'clock, we heard the announcement that called off any arrests. And I can't tell you the roar that went through the car and the joy, because it would have been a bloodbath. I think they went back because the idea that they were going to come in here when there were thousands of people all over the place, union people everywhere, they could not have successfully closed this park down. And I think they recognized it. Apart from the illegality of it, the First Amendment right to the protesters, it was just too massive. It's too big now. This park is becoming a permanent feature, I hope of the next generation of protests. So we're hopeful. We encourage people to still get down here. Uh, uh, Michael, as I mentioned to Councilman uh, Jumani Williams, I was hearing in the middle of last week from people in the health department of the city that, that the administration was trying to come up with some rationale to use to actually clear the park, and they were looking at a health emergency uh, as the most likely one. Uh, but could you talk about this particular park? Uh, because it's uh, uh, the protesters in choosing it uh, really uh, were brilliant in the sense that it w it's not a park public park that has a closing hour, but it was actually one of these parks that was allowed to be built by a private developer in exchange for getting a higher building that the developer wanted to, to build, and what that means in terms of what the legal rights of the protesters are in this particular park. You know, Juan, yesterday we wrote a letter to Brookfield Properties, the mayor and the police, outlining the fact that the so-called health emergency was a pretext. You've been here. You know that this place is cleaner than the streets we live on in New York City, much cleaner. They needed a pretext for exactly the reason you're saying. It's a private public park. While we haven't seen the agreement, it's open 24 hours. We said in that letter, you can't come in here. This park cannot be coming. Please cannot come in here. If you want to come in here, you have to get a court order to get in here. There's no health emergency, and it's illegal to come in. This is a 24-hour open park, and even the, quote, regulations they've tried to impose in the last few weeks, no sleeping bags, no tarps, those are made up. Our, our view is those are illegal. You can't do that in this park. You can't issue regulations after the fact. It's a First Amendment-protected territory in this city and in this country. They tried to come up with a pretext. They realized the letter that we sent outlined all of the cleaning that we've been doing, the people in the park work all night on and all day on. And I can tell you, you can eat off the ground in this park. <laughs> so it was a BS excuse. But it really, you know, that was part of it, the legality. But really, the main part was the fact that there were thousands of people here this morning at 5 a.m. You know, Michael, last night, um, as Ryan Devereaux and I walked around, oh, around 11 o'clock at night, 
Uh, we saw on the granite stone there is the sign that has always been there. Um, it's a steel sign that says Zuccotti Park, no skateboarding, rollerblading or bicycling allowed in the park. That's been there for a very long time. And for those who are watching, I'm showing that right now. Well, right next to it is what looked like another steel sign that had been there for a long time. But when I just peeled it back a little, it clearly had just been put up with tape, but it looks metal. And it says this. People said it had just been put up. Notice, Zuccotti Park is a privately owned space that is designed and intended for use and enjoyment by the general public for passive recreation. For the safety and enjoyment of everyone, the following types of behavior are prohibited in Zuccotti Park camping and or erection of tents or other structures, lying down on the ground or lying down on the benches, sitting areas or walkways, which unreasonably interferes with the use of benches, sitting areas or walkways by others, the placement of tarps or sleeping bags or any other covering on the property. Now, again, this is, looks like it's written in a metal plaque, but in fact, this is a plastic sign that was put up right next to the official one that says, Don't skateboard. Storage or placement of personal property on the ground, um, benches, sitting areas, or walkways, which unreasonably um, interfered with the use of such areas by others. And then it goes on to say what it always had said, the use of bicycles, skateboarding, and roller blades, uh, roller skates. And uh, that that goes on from there. That metal plaque, this is very creative, though it actually was plastic, put up right next to um, the sign that said the standard no skateboarding, rollerboarding, uh, rollerblading. You know, Amy, it shows how desperate they are. They have a set of rules here that allow exactly what's happening right now. And now they're trying to change the rules once they don't like the way it's come out for them. They can't do it. They can try and go to court and do it, but they certainly can't because a private owner decides, I want this rule or that rule, can't just call up the cops and say, hey, cops, why don't you come in and arrest the, the, rule, the people here? Because we just made up a new set of rules. Michael, this, can't raises, do it. this raises an interesting question. Looking at the New York Times story that was called Privately Owned Park Open to Public Has Its Own Rules, uh, that was in yesterday's paper, it reads, quote, Zuccotti Park, the half-acre plaza in Lower Manhattan, now synonymous with Occupy Wall Street, exists in a strange category of New York parkland identified by a seeming oxymoron, a privately owned public space. The park was established in a wave of development that spurred corporate plazas after changing Changes were made to the city zoning laws in the early 60s. The laws generally give real estate developers zoning concessions in exchange for public space. There are now at least 520 such parks, arcades, and plazas in New York City, both indoors and out, with a total of 3.5 million square feet of space. Zuccotti is unusual and that it does not adjoin the 54-story office tower, One Liberty Plaza, that spawned it. Rather, it's bounded on all four sides by streets, Broadway, Trinity Place, Cedar, and Liberty Streets. And while the developer did not win the right to build a larger structure in exchange for the park, it was given leeway on certain height and setback restrictions, according to Gerald Caden, a lawyer and professor of urban planning and design at Harvard University. This idea of who owns this park anyway, and the name of it, of course, the CEO of Brookfield Properties, uh, that is across the street. Michael, if you could just comment on that use of this public property. Now, I don't think you could. I don't think it's a good argument that Brookfield somehow owns this park. Brookfield got the right to do certain things to its buildings so that the public could really have access and use this park. So the idea that Brookfield, a private developer, and start the, issuing all kinds of regulations on a park that really belongs to you and I and the rest of the people here in Liberty Park um, is really outrageous. It is not a private park in that sense at all. I want to thank you, Michael Ratner, for being with us. Was there, by the way, a Wall Street march today, um, leaving were, from were, Zuccotti Park to Wall Street? There were two marches. There was one that I was on up to the uh, city hall, completely peaceful, on the sidewalk, but militant brought tears to my eyes when you hear people say, the people united will never be defeated. Then there was one down to Wall Street, uh, a separate one going down to the Wall Street Bull with some amazing slogans down there such as castrate the bull. So it's been an incredibly vigorous time here in the park. I encourage people to get down here, 
get to your own Occupy Wall Street and get to this park. I want to thank you for being with us, Michael Ratner, speaking to us from the heart of the park, from the heart of the Occupy Wall Street movement in Zuccotti Park. And finally, Yotam Marom is with us, one of the Occupy Wall Street organizers. Yotam, what are the plans for today and for tomorrow? Three marches planned for tomorrow. Uh, well, yeah, basically, it's a huge plan. Uh, the idea is, well, we're standing in solidarity with hundreds of thousands of people from around the world all rising up the same day. And the plan for New York is a bunch of different actions on a bunch of different issues, education, housing, jobs, war, the environment, all over the city, all day, culminating in a huge convergence of time square at 5 p.m. Yo, Tom Arum, I want to thank you for being with us again on Saturday. On Saturday there are major plans for marches. Um, Chase Manhattan Bank on uh, Times Square. Um, and we will, of course, continue to follow this on Democracy Now! and at democracynow.org when we are not on the